Hey everyone, I'm Armory Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. So it's finally, finally happened. We can change any of our monster skills for the low, low cost of a hundred thousand gold. Depending on whether or not you have a good gold collection system going on, that's a low cost. Anyhow, I'm super excited about this. By the way, it's not forever, it's just for the next two weeks. I'm super excited about this because there are so many skills I want to change. And once again, the reason Social Point is doing this is because they are implementing a huge, huge change to the game mechanics, specifically with control skills. Control skills, after you land a control skill, whether it be freeze, whether it be stun, whether it be possession, after that effect takes place, the monster is going to gain a positive effect immune to stun, freeze, or possession for that one turn. Stun has always been like that. If you stun a monster, they become recently stunned, meaning you can't stun the monster until the following turn. Now possession and freeze give the exact same thing. So finally they're all on the equal playing field. You're not gonna be able to chain freeze nonstop for the whole entire game or chain possession nonstop for the whole entire game. Now of course it's not like that's an end all be all. In my personal opinion, the change isn't really going to influence the game that much. I think and maybe maybe I'm not too worried about it, but in, in my honest opinion, all that's really gonna happen is now your treachery monster. It's just going to be a monster that can remove positive effects and everything goes back to normal. You're still going to have a three speed monster. I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, now we need to rely on life runes. Now we need to do this. Now we need to do that. Honestly, I really don't think the game is going to change that much. If you do see a lot of monsters with life runes on defense thinking, oh, they can take advantage of recently stunned, freeze, possession. Well, to be honest, like using my example with Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, turn one, AoE possession, your monster are all possessed. And then they become recently possessed. No big deal, your treachery monster removes positive effects from all the enemy monsters. On your next turn with Baba Yaga, you can two-turn possess or single possess. So, I really don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. You're just going to have to work around it. You're going to have to bring um, trait, uh, trait disable monsters, remove positive effect monsters. Trait disable specifically against like the mountain monsters that are immune to stun and freeze. Now, because the only way to really mobilize them now is with something like a possession. Now, of course, control um, cooldowns activated is still very powerful. Total blind is very powerful. Although, to be completely honest, total blind is not in the same league as a possession or a freeze or a stun. Because if, even if a monster is total blinded, they can still use a self skill, self boost skill. They can do an extra turn skill and then get a regular attack in. So sometimes doing that freeze and that stun really is more significant. Possession has the same problem where if a monster is possessed, they can use a self skill. They can do they can do an extra turn skill and then they can attack you. So every everything has its ups and downs. Personally, overall, I am a fan of the change. I know some people may disagree and there are some definitely some valid criticisms. One of the biggest criticisms I saw in the comment section, and I apologize I don't recall your name, but one of the most valid criticisms I saw was that um, a lot of times when we see these changes, we always like to think, oh, it doesn't benefit free to play. Pay to win is still going to dominate, and that's always going to be true, no matter what is introduced into the game, whether it be a new monster, a new event, whatever, a paying player will always have an advantage. That's just a matter of fact, and it should be. It makes perfect sense. If this new monster gets released that is like the best monster ever, who's going to get it? A free to play player or someone who can pay to get the monster first? Clearly the, mon the person that can pay to get the monster first. So no matter what, any new change, it technically does always benefit a paying player. That being said, there is also a negative when a change is this quote unquote impactful. And that's that certain players, especially p players that have paid a lot of money, they have prioritized specific monsters. And it does really suck if they prioritize a monster that ended up getting hit really hard and now that monster isn't meta anymore. So being a paying player, there is definitely a double edged sword to it. Yeah, you can be extremely benefit from changes, but if that changes really against you, you definitely get hurt because you invested so much time, money, and resources to one specific monster. But again, overall, my personal opinion, just like with relics, people kind of went overboard on relics. I don't really think it's going to have that much of an impact. If anything, I just like it more because yes, I can take on a Kihaku. I can take on a Ruby. Ruby, she can do Ruby explosion and land possession and freeze or whatever on me. And guess what? That's it. She can do lane odds next turn. My monsters are probably going to be immune to it. Or if two of the effects landed, there's a high likelihood that lane odds isn't going to do anything. So Ruby loses value, um, Kihaku loses value, monsters that have double deny skills like Haxer, Haxer gains immense value. He has AoE hack, which by which is a special exclusive hack, so it already bypasses immune to possession. And then he also has AoE stun, then he has a single time stop. 
a single hack hackster just an amazing monster so if you have them at 130 oh my goodness you you prioritize the right monster but it is also good to keep in mind that anything and everything could possibly be changed the mechanics of the game could change and how big of an impact will it have i guess we'll find out with the coming weeks but i really don't see it being that important again people have been saying oh let's prioritize life runes let's do this let's do that Again, there's always a downside. You can prioritize life runes, but then it becomes easier to get abused. It, it really does. Like, how hard is it to come up with a team combination where your monster, like even Ruby, like seriously, how hard is it? I can probably look in the light category, find an enemy, find a monster that can remove positive effects from the enemy team. I don't think it's too big of a deal to where this new change is gonna break the game to where people are quitting. It's an overreaction, guys. Come on, just give it a try. I think you'll find that you end up liking it more than you hate it. Now, of course, I could be wrong. Again, I'm someone from I'm I'm from the perspective that I love change. I love something that's new, and I never have a, a huge overreaction thing. Again, the same thing with relics. People that re relics were gonna break everything. My baby account barely started using relics like a week ago, and I've been managing without relics, and it's been fine. So let's let's just take it easy. Let's try the game out. Let's see what happens. And I got in a rant when the whole point of this video is just to talk about paying gold to remove skills oh my god i love that so much so let's change the skill control dice control dice is a skill i don't need anymore i loved it because it was a 50 percent chance to apply a random effect to all of the enemy monsters i had a one chin cooldown so even if i got hit with cooldowns activated it wasn't that big of a deal but with a recent change to 50 percent skills uh this skill never lands and considering cooldowns activated is very powerful i'm thinking of running mineral blood so i'm going to change that skill and the whole purpose of this video is just to talk about some specific skills I'm going to be changing. Also to ask you guys, what skills are you going to be changing? What should I maybe change? Again, with the change, is it really a good idea to run Ruby Explosion, Implosion, and Laying Odds? They kind of might not be the best things. I think maybe Laying Odds and Implosion I don't need. Maybe I can also replace Laying Odds. So we can, we can test. We can do a lot of things. Another thing I want to change is Sammy's skill. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. You have... A skill I do not need and the skill I want unholy resurrect I can replace necromatic secrets because again 50% is actually 50% so now I have the 100% life recovery this is gonna save my butt for sure and you know what I'm really dumb I wish I would have read the announcement sooner knowing that we could change our skills because death moratorium would have come so much in handy in the nemesis dungeon Unfortunately, I didn't have it, so I struggled with the Nemesis Dungeon. I actually didn't even complete it. Now, part of that was kind of my own stupidity, where I played the game on my phone and my phone died. And then when I logged in on my computer, it's like, oh, I lost my three Nemesis monsters. What? And the enemy has full HP, full stamina. Which is essentially what happens if you were to turn your phone off, or if the game was to shut down somehow. So, it doesn't matter. Like, Death Moratorium, point is, would have come in handy. Also, don't play on your phone if you if you don't have that great of a phone. Just play on your PC. Play on wherever you know for sure. Um, nothing's going to go wrong. Especially if it's the Nemesis Dungeons. Anyhow, Unholy Resurrect. There's like so many monsters I have that I know I wanted to change. Um, Gakora. I think Gakora, if I'm not mistaken, I want to run only one tusk and maybe replace Long Life. Although, I don't know what I value more, so maybe that's worth looking into. Fearlessness. Maybe Moderate Light Damage, Mirror to Itself applies mirror to itself you know what i feel like if anyone is watching this video and you're like in league three or above league two maybe could you do us all a favor and just for fun can you troll and put your best team on defense with default skills can you just pay 400k to give them the default skills how fun would that be to get into a a pvp to get into pvp fight someone that is in a super high league like seriously in the top 5,000, top 100 in league threes and two and above and just to have their monsters have all default skills, I think that would be a lot of fun. Now, let's see. Another monster I know I wanted to change, and I know I didn't change anything on Gakora. I'll decide that later. The cool thing about being able to change for gold is that you can try out so much stuff. Totem, I know I had old skills on Totem, and I and my friend Simon would always be like, why don't you change the skills? And I'm like, because I'm not going to pay gems to change four skills or two skills on a monster. It's not worth it. So... One thing I want to do is finally change his skills because he did get changed a lot. So let's see. What do I need? Increase the allies max damage by 100%. Let's see. Let's see. Increases targets. So see, why do I need a single ally when I have a skill that increases all of my allies? These skills do the same thing except one is single target one is AoE. So let's do the AoE version, obviously. Decreases all targets maximum stamina damage by 25%. 
Decrease the C, single enemy, or AoE? Definitely want the AoE. So thank goodness this is costing me gold. Not that I'll probably use Totem that much, but it's great to have. Increase all allies max life by 75. Targets max life by 75, sure. Let's go for AoEs. Why do I have all those single targets? Because there was a time when those skills were better. Increase all allies max stamina, don't care for that. Targets max stamina, increases max life and everything. Increase targets max life. So this is, once again, AoE. So if you have Totem, you might want to change the skills. Make sure to give them the good skills. All right, that's good there. Who else do we need? The one, the only Egg Eater. See, the reason I want Egg Eater is because Egg Eater does have a zero cooldown stun skill. And again, I never wanted to pay the gems for it. But now that it costs gold, I am definitely going to do it. So we'll go here. We will go here. We will go to skills. We will swap. Multi-effect you want. Horror Eggs is the skill you don't need. Poison eggs you want and poison. Let's see zero cooldown nightmares or poison. Let's see. Let's see. Where is the zero cooldown stun skill? You know what? I might even put dominating eggs 50% chance of possessing all targets for the two skills that can land possession. I might do that snake chomp is the one you want. So even though this is a 50% chance of stunning, I do believe it's still a hundred percent. I do believe that's the case. I don't think this is one of the skills that was actually fixed and we can actually check it in the adventure map so let's go here 421 let's fight let's change my team let's get rid of everyone and let's find good old egg eater egg eater all right where is he he's level 100 he has team speed and single speed let's put some low level teammates and let's try out snake chomp so snake chomp who is not immune to stun and there's a stun right there cool cool and we'll try it again recharge here and check this out snake chomp there two for two we'll try one more time are we gonna be three for three and bam yeah it's one of those skills that for the longest time even though it says 50 percent chance it is actually 100 percent. so if you don't have that on your egg eater make sure to run that on your egg eater all right what else do i want to change bronzes do you have anything I like Mega Freeze, I like the Taunt, I like that Mega Freeze, I think Bronces is fine. Who else do I need? There are so many monsters I can potentially change. I don't want to forget anyone, because I know I should get this done. Uh, let's look at my medals. The Mirror is fine, Scrap. Ooh, Scrap. I think for the longest time I've been wanting to give Scrap... I've been wanting to give Scrap Saber Throwing, because I have that on my baby account. I just don't know what to replace. I want to keep Massive, I want to keep Moonshine. I probably could replace homebrewed nuclear device. It is a powerful skill, 70 damage special based, especially when you give yourself mech hater. But I don't know, in most, maybe it's the way I've ruined him. In this account, most of the time, when he gets his turn in, all the enemy monsters are alive. So saber throwing comes in handy. Although most of the time I do massive smoke screen. So unless they're alive by the next turn, I don't know, maybe I need to re-ruin him. So I'll come back to him. Let's see, Haxer's fine. Ty Timmy, I think is fine. Oh, my Talos. Can I change anything? Can I give you skills group 4 skills? Victim Chosen deals insane special damage to one enemy. Let's see. I like the extra turn skill. I like applying sunburn to everyone. I like applying single sunburn. No, I don't. And Ruby Blade applies sunburn to a single enemy. So I think I can replace Emerald. So let's do that. Victim Chosen, skills group 4 skill. Uh, don't care for this. Quartz Blade, zero cooldown is nice, but don't care for it. Don't care for it. Don't care for it. Don't care for it. Cool. So now I got a powerful 80 damage skill. Nice, nice. So I believe these two are skills group four. Cool, cool. Oh, let's see if I can get trade disabled to this one. Forgotten artifact skills. Let's see. Um, I got victim chosen. Golden protector. Don't care for single trade disable. I don't have the trade disable one. Darn it. So unfortunately, I can't give him. I probably need to rank him up. Let's see, who else could I give a different skill to? Rossigan, I think, is fine. I saw Ross. I, I said Rossigan metal, but I was thinking about him. Let's see. Removes negative effects and positive effects. Gives one extra turn. Double damage to everyone. Removes positive effects from all enemies. See? There we go. Rossigan. Rossigan compared with Ruby. And the whole monster becomes recently stunned, recently possessed. Doesn't even matter. It does not matter. So these skills right here, they are not giants. Removes positive effects from all enemies. These become super valuable skills. Does not make a summon. Removes negative effects from all allies. So is there a better thing? Applies days to enemies. That's pretty powerful. 
AoE days. Uh, deals moderate, removes positive effects from all allies, removes negative effects from all allies. So I suppose I could replace does not make a summer with bitter reading. They do the same thing. They remove negative side effects from all allies. The reason I like does not make a summer was because of that zero cooldown. That or not zero cooldown, the zero stamina cost. You never know when you have no stamina and you need to remove negative effects. That being said, I don't know. Maybe I do want bitter reading. Let's see what else I have. I have uh, let the dogs bark. Mounted. Co oh, that's interesting. Damage boost to our allies with no stamina cost, with no cooldown. So spammable. Um, let's see what else. Rosinant, 50% chance of days. So yeah, I think... Oh, and again, I like the AoE days and I like this skill. Although, maybe I should test it to see what Rosinant does on defense. If he does not does not make a summer often, that's a waste. But yeah, there's Rosigan, Rosigod. A lot of monsters. Like, now is the time to change skills. And keep in mind, this is for the next two weeks. So you can play around with skills. If you decide there's something you like, something you didn't like, you can completely change it. There's nothing wrong. Also, I should mention this because I have a Shazanar that I rarely ever use. Actually, hardly ever use is more accurate. If I go to my Shazanar, Fire, Rarity, Legendary. And where are you, Shazanar? I love Shazanar. Just for, so everyone knows. Shazanar, one of my most favorite monsters. One of the most powerful monsters, in my opinion. Fire attackers, that is. Because she can give herself a damage boost and has a 60 damage fire-based spammable attack incredibly incredibly powerful that being said and i lost her where is shalinar 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 where are you how come i can't find you um let me do a search again yeah because i do not see her oh there you are bam shalinar that being said she has a level 10 rune that i'm not really utilizing so right now for the next two weeks it costs half the amount of gems as it would normally cost to remove it so if you have a if you if you have a rune on a monster you really don't utilize anymore, you might probably want to remove that rune. But I would specifically wait until the Rune Lords event starts. Right now it is what love season. Don't do it now. Don't wait for Rune Lords after one day and eleven hours. Cool. I have two thousand points. Yeah, wait for Rune Lords. Please, please, please listen to me and wait for Rune Lords. That way you can maybe place in the top five thousand, maybe even the top five hundred, and get some of your gems back. Okay, please do that. So don't don't go on wasting right now. But yeah, now is the perfect time to swap your skills. Make sure you look through your most commonly used monsters. See if there's something you need to swap. See if there's a better skill you can give your monster. Play around with skills. Why not? It's free. Well, it's almost free. It's 100k per per skill. I'm sure there's a lot of skills you might want to swap. And now is the perfect time to do it. And again, with runes, get some of your good runes back. But just wait until Rune Lords event starts. And you can do this Rune Lords or the next Rune Lords. It's completely up to you. Look through some of your ranked up monsters. And look through their skills and see is there something you would have liked better. Experiment. Try something out. If you don't like it, you could always change it back. You know, there's some monsters that you're really iffy between five skills. I know Demise, my Demise, I'm always wondering. On my baby account, I have the Life Regen skill. I have Endless Celebration. No. Oh, maybe I should run Endless Celebration. I don't think I run this. Removes positive effects from all targets. See, that becomes super valuable. Removing positive effects from all targets. So you want Endless Celebration. You really do. You want to, if you have Demise on team on your team, you want to be able to do Strength from Beyond. Turn Chance for your attacker. Attacker attacks the enemy. Your Treachery monster, your second monster, does the AoE Possession, AoE Freeze, AoE Stun, whatever. You mobilize the enemy. They skip their turn. When it's Demise's turn again, bam, Endless Celebration, remove the recently possessed, recently stunned, recently frozen, and then you can deny again. So Endless Celebration is something you definitely want to run on Demise. So now's a good time to go looking through monsters that can remove positive effects. Let's see. Draining Light. This is a skill I run on my Demise. I, I'm probably going to replace it. I actually run Shining Tackle on my baby count and it works wonders. It is spammable. It blinds. When the enemy is blind, they tend to miss a lot. So there's so much you can play around with. So don't hesitate. Go out and see what you can do. Let's see, Dungeon Master, I run a bit late. I run this Total Blind, Single Total Blind, AoE Total Blind, and Deactivate all cooldowns, removes negative effects from all allies. What else can I do? I can apply random torture effect to all enemies. Maybe I've always wondered if that would be a good skill. Roll the effect. I could try it out. Apply random torture to a single enemy. 50% chance of stun and possession. I used to run roll the dice, but again, the 50%, I decided to change it. Uh, first module, book carrier. Yeah, again, if there's anyone in, in like Legendary League in the top 500, top 5,000, put some default skills on your best monster just for fun. Just 
just let us have a, some few cool wins. But yeah, guys, uh, that's it. I could probably go on rambling forever on all of my monster skills I want to change. But that would really take forever. So actually, maybe I'll do a stream dedicated just for that. I want you guys to let me know in the comments if you guys have followed me and seen my videos. If there's any skills you don't agree with, if there's skills you think I should change, please let me know in the comments below so I can change them because I know I'm probably going to forget some. What I would recommend everyone to do, by the way, to find what monsters need changing, is to just go to PvP, go to change your team, because they're always ordered by the ones that are the highest ranked. So, for example, Laomu, and then I can go to skills and I can see, is there something I want? Do I not want to run Noxious Blow? Maybe I want to run the Zero Cooldown skill. Maybe I want to run this skill that heals myself and an ally. Here's the Zero Cooldown Noxious Hit Poison skill. So do that. Go to PvP, and that's because typically the ranked up monsters are the ones you utilize the most. Igursus, for example, I know a lot of people run Pakaya, the AoE, the AoE burning skill. I don't run it on mine. I run Vesuvius. I run the Big Shield. I run Etna, the single 70 damage special base attack or 65. And I run Tida, the 75 or 70 fire base attack, single hits. I don't run the AoE. And it's always worked for me. Although there have been times where I prefer the AoE. So maybe I should try running it. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below. What should I replace for the AoE burning? But yeah, just do that. Go through all your monster list. See what you should run, what shouldn't you run, what would be a better replacement. And again, if you guys know my monsters, if you know what I run, let me know if I should change something because I am really, really curious and I don't want to miss anything. Here's Baba Yaga with two possession skills and, and I'm debating, should I replace one of the possession skills due to the recent changes or nah, because it doesn't really have that much of an impact in my opinion. Let's see, what else do I have? Yeah, guys, I'm talking too much. Diamond's Bodyguard, Undertaker, don't want to change anything. Bella, I know my Bella um, my Bella builds are different on both of my accounts. Here, I don't run the AoE Sunburn. Maybe I should. Maybe I should run the Bella Beast. You feel the hit tonight, remove side effect from all targets. See, very powerful skill that still allows me to deal damage and deny. Thanks to removing positive effects. I have a strong single. I have a self skill. I have a single blind. Maybe I should put the A. I don't know. So, guys, let me know in the comments below. Is there any of my monsters that you know I should change their skills? Or do you have any monsters you're going to change their skills? What skill are you going to be replacing and why? Whatever thoughts you may have, whatever monster you may have, please let me know in the comments below. I am so looking forward to seeing how people are going to use these next two weeks. Use it to have fun. Use it to test out new builds. Because who knows when it's going to be the next time. Oh, look. <laughs> I found one that is missing the AoE possession. Who knows? Oh man, this is a monster that seriously loses usability thanks to the recent change, if you can't do something. Um, yeah, as I was saying, who knows when is it going to be the next time where you can actually change skills for the low, low cost of 100k gold. So yeah, um, guys, give me your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time.